Hey everybody, Dave here again, and I've got an exciting video that's going to show you a relatively new feature. It's been out maybe, I don't know, a couple of months, two, three months-ish. And the nice thing about this is that they finally are, well, not yet, it's in preview still. Uh, it is actually going out to GA, it looks like, and it's getting rolled out through several tenants. But this is the ability to literally model a schema. I'm going to show you in Power BI something that's been there since, well, I think since the inception of Power BI. And so when you go ahead and you create a blank report, one of the things that you get is this model view. And this model view allows you to take tables and connect them through relationships uh, within the table. But it's also a visual way of modeling information and data. So you could have data coming in from Dataverse, you could have data coming in from in, not only Dataverse, but you could have access uh, tables, Excel tables. And even though you have all these different data sources that's coming in, you can use this data modeler to connect or relate data so that you essentially are creating a query for your report. Well, they finally have brought in this feature into the Power Platform for Dataverse, and it's absolutely fantastic. So if I go ahead and, and click here on the table side, and I click New Table, for those of you that are stuck in this legacy version of it, the only thing you can do is design a new table with this um, co-pilot type thing. And while this is okay, it's not allowing you to model your data or model uh, a schema from which to build an app on. It just allows you to create a table. So if this is you and you have this very thing going on here, one of the things you're going to want to do to get to this feature, and I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm going to copy this URL out, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste this in. Now, instead of make.powerapps.com, I'm going to go in between make and power apps and type in preview. So make.preview.com powerapps.com okay so again I'm putting a preview and a, and a dot and now if I click enter I get to the same look and feel but all of the new features that are in preview that haven't been rolled out to my tenant are now accessible to me so that I can play with them and at least see what's going on so this is a way for you uh, if you can't find a feature in any of the videos that I do or any of the videos that you see others do online you can just try to pop in this preview and you'll probably get to uh, you know the new features that you see there okay now here it is, create new tables. This is what they're calling it, but essentially this is a data model. This allows you to create multiple tables and create the relationships between them. Um, now, see how this looks versus how this looks, okay? So completely different, they moved the cheese, but you get a bunch of really, really cool stuff that comes along for the ride. So here we go where we are choosing an option to create tables. Now, I will tell you that Copilot is still pretty, weak and also helpful at the same time. So I kind of have this love-hate relationship with Copilot uh, as it relates to the Power Platform and a lot of the Microsoft products because it does a fantastic job, but instead of doing your typical 80-20 rule where 80% of the heavy lift is done by AI, it's more like 60-40 where it gets 40% to 60 at best uh, of, the, of whatever it is you're trying to do correctly. And then at some point, inevitably, it's not able to take it across the finish line or the majority of it. So what I usually do, I'm going to introduce uh, this new site that, to, well, it may be new to some of you. Others probably know it. Um, I don't use ChatGPT directly. Uh, you can use all of the models that's in OpenAI or ChatGPT, but I use this thing called Poe. And Poe is free. You get so many credits per month, and then there are premium uh, large language models that you can chat with. So I have a personal preference. Now this is me. Out of the box you get this assistant, right? That's the default one. But also uh, free and available is this Grok, G-R-O-Q. Not to be confused with Elon Musk's Grok, G-R-O-K. And so Grok, G-R-O-Q, 
is a large language model that allows inferences and large language model processing to be done super fast. They make custom chips. So instead of having to wait very long to get a response, um, that's personally why I chose it. Anyway, I've, I've digressed. So uh, basically these assistants uh, or the out of the box assistant is really Claude 3.0 and then you have access to 3.5, but if you click on this more, you see all of the different models. You even have stable diffusion, which kind of sucks because it doesn't have all the plugins, um, but they've got this image creators, they've got all the, these other ones in here, Gemini. Anyway, I'll let you explore all this on your own, but I use this Llama, so you're, if you don't do anything, you're gonna get assistance. And if you come down here into the settings, uh, you can actually choose your default bot right here. And this is where I changed mine from assistant to llama. So if you wanna do something similar and you played with it and you say, boy, I wish I could make that my default bot, that's how you do it. Okay, so the reason I'm taking you here is a couple of reasons. I use this because I hate typing as much as possible. And I can press this little microphone and record my voice and get a super fast response from this Llama 370 Grok. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to overcome the shortcomings that you currently get in Copilot. And then I'm going to get just enough detail out of this to then come over here and see if I can get Copilot to do some work for me. I would like to create an application in the Microsoft Power Platform, specifically a Canvas app, I need you to consider features for this app, and I would like you to break down a schema that I could give to Copilot in the Power Platform and hopefully have it develop the application for me. So the application that I am thinking about is a very simple app where I have a list of leads that I want to have various salespeople that are assigned to the lead execute and follow up on those leads. Now, the key is going to be measuring where we are at with the leads and which stage in the process. Now, the following process stages are available. New, in process, closed, one, and lost. Okay. And so let me change that there. So that's good. All right. So it stopped recording my voice. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now I have a feature set. Now I could even go so far as to say, please review the feature set and help me create a proper um, backlog for, say, Azure DevOps or uh, Jira or whatever. And you could use this in all kinds of great and interesting ways. But here we got the schema. We've got a leads entity, salespeople entity, and then the relationships. Now, if I give this to ChatGPT, I can tell you right, I'm sorry, if I give this to Copilot, I know it's gonna choke. And just to prove this to you, you would think that we would you know, get some help here. And I'll paste all of that in and I'll, let's see here, Table options, multiple generate, table size, it, medium, I guess is fine. Relationships include, okay, so these are your options. Um, and I've given it all of that and I have only used up half of my allocation. I get 2000 characters and I've used just under a thousand. So let me hit generate. Let's see what this does. And here you go. Now this is the ironic part. It says the query is too long. And I'm like, are you kidding me? because the query isn't too long, it, had, it was less than half. So this is where I get so frustrated with Copilot. Okay, so let me go back here. Let's just start very simply. We'll pick this and we'll come back into Copilot. Let's do this and hit generate. I'm only giving it the leads entity table. Let's see if it can do something with that. And it looks like it is. This doesn't take too long, but it can take about 30 to 45 seconds on average. Okay, so based on the leads entity, it's already deduced that I needed a salesperson's table. And so if we hop up over here, it's already seen that inside of here, uh, let's see here, leads name, uh, lead ID, person. Okay, so assignee ID. 
and because I said foreign key, reference to salespeople, Copilot was smart enough to know that it needs a relatable salespeople entity table and it also handled the relationship for us. So in that section, Copilot was genius and it was very helpful. So that saved me from having to, to do whatever. Now, all of that original text that I typed was verbose and this was a little bit more. So I will tell you from experience working with Copilot, uh, again, I had that love-hate relationship with it, it's really about learning to speak its primary love language, meaning how can you speak sweet nothings to it and have it do your bidding? Okay, so it's kind of like being in a relationship. I don't know if you have any partners or significant other, but bottom line is, is that, you know, you catch more flies with honey than, you know, visceral whatever. And in this case, if you're, uh, you'll catch more flies without, uh, you know, boring them to death and, you know, they're drooling going, Bleh. <laughs> so in any event, so we now have this leads table. So let's just look into this thing. Let's see what we got here. So let's view the data. So in addition to creating the schema and the relationships, it's gonna give us some uh, current information. Now, the one thing that I will caution about that I do think is um, an area that Microsoft needs to focus on is that it gives us a lead ID. And this is very helpful when you're looking for distinct row identifiers within a row. But for those of you that's already working inside of Microsoft's Power Platform, specifically Dataverse, you know that when you manually create a table and you give it a table name, in addition to the table name, there's also a column that almost identically matches the name of the table. And that is a GUID, which in and of itself is a unique row ID. So unless you have a specific reason for having this here in your schema, um, for whatever reason, then I would get rid of this. So if you edit the column, you'll see here that you've got lead, lead ID, and there's no way, unfortunately, to get rid of this thing. So this is where you have to do it. So go back over to leads, click on the three ellipses. Now go to properties, okay? This primary column, see that it says lead ID? Well, in this case, I want the primary column to be the lead name because this is what I want to show up. Okay, so I now make the lead name the primary column and I can come along here now and delete this column because I don't need it. Everything else to me looks good. Let's see what this is. Let's edit this column and it's created a choice and it's given it a name. It's a custom uh, choice here. And so the default choice, let's make this new and we'll update that due date all that looks well the notes are fine um, that's any notes that's going into the leads da, 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 da. let's see what this is notes display name single line of text let's change this to be multiple lines of text just in case you know we have a nice long note that we want to add uh, let's see we'll update this here so a lead name is required assignee ID uh, that's fine for right now. Uh, it's not required. So I think that's good. Let's look at the data for the salespeople. So we also have a salesperson ID. So let's get rid of this. Same thing again. Let's go over here. Properties, salesperson ID, make the name, come over to here. Let's delete that. I want to add a new column now. So let's add an email column. Let's call this uh, text email and we'll call this email, okay? That way, this will help us with our automation sequence. So single line of text, email, email, that looks good. So that is all well and good there. Okay, so that's it, guys. That is, is pretty much as simply how we can go ahead through here and now model our data. And we can see here that there is a relationship and we have a many to one. And so if we look at this in more plain English, you can see that this many to one is depicted by the symbol. The star is the many and the one. Now, if you try to read this through plain English, if you're new to databases or new to data structures, a way of considering many, one, many to one is to speak it out loud in your, in your head or anyway, the point is just speak it out loud. Um, or like I said, in your head so you understand what's going on. The way you say this is leads, I can have many leads. So for all of these leads, I have one assigned salesperson. 
or another way to say this is for every one salesperson, I need to be assigned one or more or many leads, okay? And so that's how you read this here. All you have to do at this point is just sit, save and exit. When you're done, select and, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you can read that there and just hit save and exit. And now, lo and behold, I have a two new tables called leads and salespeople. And this should dump me back out into the tables area. The only final piece that I want to show you here uh, at this point is that now I could go ahead and just generate an application from this, as well as I want to show you a different way of um, when you're back out here at the, the tables. Now we're in the uh, current production, not the preview, but it's the same thing. When you add custom tables and you come into tables over here on the left side, I want you to click on this custom. See right now it shows, it shows you the recommended tables. If you click all, this will show you every single table in Dataverse. But if you're looking for just those tables that you've made or customized, you can come over here and filter on this and then you will get to see these tables, which apparently it's still generating your tables. But assuming that this was all well and good and done, uh, you would see the, I'm sorry for all the dinging guys, my phone is just going nuts. Um, but in any event, like I said, when you get over here, uh, you get to the tables, you'll be able to see it here. I am gonna pause this because I wanna show you one final uh, operation where we're now gonna create a application from these tables. So just to unpause real quick, we're still waiting and generating the tables. I'll be back in just a few more moments. So guys, uh, it's been a few minutes here and just for two tables, it's literally chugging away here. So I'm not exactly quite sure what's going on. It's 9.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Monday morning. And um, I wouldn't expect that my tenant in Microsoft to be completely slammed. It's not like it's three in the afternoon. So uh, yeah, mileage is gonna vary when it comes to time. But anyway, once this is done, I'll be back. All right, guys, it looks like this has finished. And let's come over here, and there is our leads table right here. And I forget what the uh, salespeople. Okay, so we do have leads and salespeople. So leads will be the primary table uh, that we're gonna create an app from. So let's start with the data. Let's come over here to apps, and we're gonna uh, choose start with data. And Actually, let's give Copilot another chance. Let's see what we get with that very simple um, prompt. Well guys, after doing that, uh, it just wound up repeating what I did earlier and it wound up taking me right into the table designer and it was gonna try to suggest to create two brand new tables identical or similar to what I had created earlier. Anyway, so that's not gonna work. So let's try a different approach. We'll start with the data and use everyday words. Let's see here, we can select an existing table. Let's go to custom, and we're gonna do the leads, and let's create an app. Let's see what we get out of this. Gonna pause the, well, maybe not. Looks like it was going to take a long time to go, and I was like, hmm, okay. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, I am going to pause. This is probably going to take a few minutes. Okay, maybe not. So let's skip. Okay, so here we got, we got lead. Let's see what this looks like. Um, lead, current date. So let's play this. Let's see what the user experience is. So we can now see the date created. Let's edit this, and the process stage is there, so that's cool. The lead name, 
any notes that we have there is nice and long. So we do have a due date, we have a created date, so this should be read only. And we are now also missing the related table. So we're gonna have to add that in too as well. All right, so should be a quick modification because this is using Microsoft Forms. And created date, let's see what we can do here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see if I can change this. I'm going to have to go to advanced. Let me get out of here. All right, advanced, unlock. Visible, true, with. I don't want it editable. So let's get rid of this and let's add a label. Okay. Create it on. So it's complaining that it doesn't. Uh, okay, so it's still. Why is this? Dot. So it's date time. I'm trying to convert it to text, and it didn't like that either. Still complaining. What is it complaining about now? I don't care about that. I want to know where is. Ah, oh, Lord have mercy. All right, let's go through and clean up these errors. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience using forms. I normally use patch, um, but this looks to me like, okay, this is for the update. We're not gonna update. We're always just going to leave that there. Actually, I don't wanna do this. We'll just leave it empty. And we're still getting errors. Y, our value to Y. This is the positional separator. It is extremely small. Why is this? I don't need this separator here. In fact, I don't need anything here other than Delete, delete, delete. Okay, we'll leave that there. But I still don't have a date. All right, so text. Let's do short date time. And it's still the, the value. How about just short date? I still am not getting a value here. This is driving me nuts. So we're still not getting a date. So the question is, is the create date blank? Before I go and question my own sanity, make sure that there's actually data in the table because it was generating table data along with the schema. So we do have created on. Created on does exist. And it doesn't 
and the due date is populated and this created date and created on that's there and I, what am I using here so this is the card this item dot create date parent dot parent dot There we go. Now let's do text and let's just do short date. Okay, much, much, much better. So anyway, ever, ever, yeah, after having struggled with that unexpectedly, let's add an additional field where we want to have the assigned person and I want to have the assigned field. I want that to be front and center. I want this to be all the way up the top. And move up, move up, move up, move up. All right, so now we have the assignee. Let's go over here. Let's hit play. And I'm not getting a proper lookup to the table, so that's going to have to get fixed. All right, so this is definitely taking much longer than it's expected. Um, I'm going to have to look at the underlying plumbing for this and see what is going on here. So let's do what the default value is. Assignee ID. Actually, choices leads assignee ID. Okay, I need to be able to edit this. So now all of a sudden I'm getting a name, whereas I didn't have a name before. I swear I didn't change anything. Okay, uh, that's bizarre. Okay guys, you saw I didn't really change anything here and I just removed and put it back. So there's some weird flaky bug uh, going on here, but in any event, it's working now, so I guess I just had to potentially save it or maybe refresh the data or something, but in any event. So I'm going to chalk that up as a win. We'll just call this one app. Anyway, this video has gotten way longer than anticipated. That is how you use Poe, the new preview feature, which is coming to GA quite soon, and the data modeler, or what they call it, uh, actually I lost my uh, preview here, I think it was called Many Tables, P-R-E-P-R-E-W -E -E dot, it is called, come on, <laughs> Create New Tables Preview. So weird name and feature, but you'll also hear and refer to it or hear it referred to as uh, multiple tables or things of that nature. But the bottom line is all it is is a data modeler and a data designer. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <music>